Federal drug agency in the United States, uh, as well as other regulatory authorities around the world, uh, determine when medications um, have been sufficiently studied uh, in order to be granted regulatory approval. The advantage of regulatory approval for any therapy, uh, particularly in a particular age group like pediatrics, uh, is that this then helps us gain access to a medication and increases the likelihood in the United States anyway, of insurance approval uh, for prescription of a given medication. So it's important and it matters to patients, it matters when you're trying to gain access. And of course the um, FDA is a careful agency uh, and therefore when approval is granted it is based on strong evidence of uh, effect uh, effective therapy and on safety review. So fingolimid being granted FDA approval uh, indicates that from the FDA perspective, the, a paradigm study did indeed meet its endpoint and did indeed uh, demonstrate sufficient both effectiveness and safety to be granted regulatory approval. This then has made it now easier to prescribe uh, fingolimid for pediatric MS patients. The mechanism of action of fingolimod is, is interesting. It binds to a molecule which is on the surface of lymphocytes, sphingosine 1-phosphate receptor. That molecule has an effect on the lymphocyte's ability to get out of the lymph node. So what normally happens is these immune cells, known as lymphocytes, are floating around your blood and lymphatic system. And as they circulate, they stop off at, you know, way stations, which are the lymph nodes. And then they, you know, they're in there for a little bit and then they come back out. What the fingolimod does, it blocks this molecule on the surface or binds to it so that the lymphocyte can't get out of the lymph node and back into the bloodstream. The end result is that the number of circulating lymphocytes is lower in your bloodstream. However, it doesn't affect those lymphocytes that are, say, in your liver or kidneys or other organs. So they can be in those organs protecting you, which is what these immune cells do. But the ones that are able to cross into the blood, through the blood-brain barrier into the central nervous system and cause damage, that subset of lymphocytes is being reduced because they're trapped in the lymph nodes. That's more or less what we think is, you know, the general mechanism of action. There are potentially other effects as well. Some have thought that there are effects within the central nervous system that are neuroprotective. You know, I think some of that is still being worked out. But the primary anti-inflammatory effect is on the lymphocytes. Fingolimid now being approved for pediatrics will enhance our ability to prescribe it. That's one main um, uh, important facet of having FDA approval. It is indicated for pediatric multiple sclerosis as a first-line therapy. What that means is that based on comparing fingolimid to a more traditional first-line therapy, at least in the adult MS world, interferon beta-1A, the study uh, showed that fingolimid was superior. Therefore, the FDA took the stance that when comparing two treatments to one another, that the more effective treatment should be available at the beginning, uh, and that you shouldn't have to fail interferon in order to gain access to fingolimid. That's not how fingolimid has been registered uh, across the world, and in fact, interestingly, uh, in most parts of the world for adults, fingolimid is still second-line therapy, which means that in order to gain access to it, patients have to have failed first-line therapies, such as interferon, for example, or glutaramoracetate. And this reflects the landscape of approval processes that have been changing and evolving since these new MS therapies were initially proposed and designed in the late 1980s. Uh, and of course, because there were no pediatric studies in the 1980s, 1990s, or early 2000s, we um, uh, are at a different time point 
uh, for the pediatric MS landscape in terms of which treatments are going to be made first line, second line, or potentially even uh, what by third line I mean reserved for a small number of patients with perhaps particular forms uh, of highly aggressive uh, relapse characteristic.